In this video, we're going to use the Nano VNA to check out the performance of an important piece of radio test gear, specifically loads. This is a BNC load, it's a 50 ohm resistance. This is the one that comes with the Nano VNA, it's an SMA type. But sometimes we use loads to substitute for antennas when we're testing radio transmitter equipment, and this specific one is marketed by MFJ and it can theoretically handle 1.5 kilowatts. We're going to use the VNA to check the performance of it at various frequencies. We'll also use a little bit of radio frequency theory to talk about the perimeters that the Nano VNA looks at, in particular S11. And uh, the VNA measures in dB, so we got to talk about that a little bit. We're going to take some measurements and just crunch a few numbers with these formulas. But our main focus is going to be on using the Nano VNA to look at this MFJ dummy load. So let's get to it. At low frequencies, we don't have to hook up to the dummy load with a coaxial cable. We can just measure the resistance. And if I back out of the way here, you can see it reads 51.0 ohms. So it's pretty close to 50 ohms. Actually, 50.9. All right. Now, is that number correct? Well, not exactly, because these leads uh, probably have some resistance. So let's back that out. If I touch these together, it says 0.2. If I wait long enough, it says 0.1. So that means that our load here probably about 50.8 ohms. So how good is that? Is 50.8 ohms close enough to 50 ohms? So here I've got S11 defined as the reflected voltage divided by the forward voltage. So what that means is in the nano VNA out of the port 1 here it sends a voltage down a coaxial line to a load and then some of that's going to get reflected, and what it measures is the voltages, the forward voltage that goes out of it and the reflected voltage that comes back into it. And it takes the ratio of those two and presents that as S11. Now, it presents it in dB, and we'll come back to this formula in a few minutes. So how does S11 measure how good the load is? We want this to be a good load and not provide any reflection. Well, it turns out that what determines the reflection is how well the load impedance matches what's called the line impedance. So here's a piece of coaxial line. This is a much bigger one with a PL259 connector on it. But it's got a center conductor in the outer shield here. And when the signal is launched onto this line, doesn't get to the other end instantly. Instead, it goes down this line very fast, speed of light, but it's still sufficiently slow that we can consider the signal at this end as not being at the other end yet. When that signal launches onto this line, it has no idea what's at the other end of the line because it hasn't gotten there yet. So we can do some analysis. We're not going to do that here. I'm just going to tell you the answer that this line, when the signal launches on it, it looks like a 50 ohm resistance. So I plugged our measurement of 50.8 ohms into this formula along with the 50 ohm line impedance of the coaxial cable. And what I get is 50.8 minus 50 is 0.8 divided by, this is 100.8. So 0.8 over 100.8 works out to be 0 0.008. So less than 1 one hundredth is how much voltage is reflected. Now some of us are more familiar with the standing wave ratio. That's a historically important measurement. It's not used as much these days, but it can be related to the reflection coefficient through this formula here. I called it the voltage standing wave ratio, which you'll hear sometimes. So it is 1 plus 0 0.008 divided by 1 minus 0 0.008. And that works out to be 1.016, or as sometimes quoted, 1.0. 1, 6 to 1. That's a very good SWR. We would probably be happy with an SWR of 1.1 to 1, typically, or more simply, an SWR of 1.1. 1. 1. 
1.3 is probably okay for many applications, and even 2 to 1 can be accepted. Now, the Nano VNA doesn't read out SWR. It can, but I would encourage you to leave it in the S11 mode and read out S11 and DB, which is its default readout mode. Here, the relationship between S11, not in DB, which is what we figured out up here to be 0 0.008, and S11 and DB is we take S11, the vertical lines here and up here simply mean take the magnitude of it, um, in general, these are two-dimensional numbers, complex numbers with magnitude and phase, but we'll skip all that complexity here. It doesn't matter for what we're doing right now. Um, so we take 20 times the log to the base 10 of S11. We just punch that into our calculator. And what we get is minus 42 dB. That is a really good number. Just like this up here is a really good number. And 1.016 to 1 SWR is a good number. Minus 40 dB for S11 is a very good number. Up here we could accept 1.1 or 1.3. Typically for S11 measurements in dB, we'll be happy with something like minus 20 dB, but even minus 10 dB can be considered okay in some situations. So now we're using the Nano VNA to look at the performance of the load from 50 kilohertz, it's going up to 1 gigahertz. And over here on the left-hand side, I've put the marker on the lowest frequency, 50 kilohertz, more or less DC, and it's reading out about minus 41. Depends on how tight these connectors are, so you have to make sure everything's good and tight to get a good reading. Uh, now it's reading minus 41.2 dB. So it's pretty close to the minus 42 that we calculated. However, notice that at a high frequency right here, what frequency is this? This is actually around 600 megahertz. I'll put the marker on it in a minute. But at 600 megahertz, we have 0 dB. This little marker right here means that this line is 0 dB. How much do we want? We want minus 10 or minus 20. So here at the lower frequencies, it's below minus 10 and reaching almost minus 20 dB. So that's pretty good. This thing works pretty good up to about here or maybe even here. But at this frequency, which is close to 600 megahertz, it's not performing well at all. In fact, 0 dB for a reflection coefficient or an S11 is actually full reflection. It's an infinite SWR. Here we've zoomed in and I put the marker on the worst case frequency and it reads out as 590 megahertz. And the S11 value, the reflection coefficient, reads out as minus 0.66 dB. So it's bad. It's not an infinite SWR, but it's quite bad. However, if we move the marker down to frequencies we're probably interested in, at least as ham radio operators, the 70 centimeter band, I've put this on 460 megahertz, and it's reading out minus 18 dB. So, for the applications that this is designed for, it's very, very good. So, what's going on? Why is this rated from 1 to 650 megahertz? I don't know for sure. However, uh, in another video, I'm going to try to do a little teardown of this and talk about how this is designed. It's an incredibly ingenious design that they've done inside this to try to get as good as they can up to these very high frequencies. It's very hard to build a load that goes to UHF frequencies and can dissipate like 1.5 kilowatts. It's much easier to do it with a B and C load like this, although it does take some engineering to make that work up to this one I've measured into the gigahertz range. And this little guy, the SMA that comes with the Nano VNA, this little thing can operate into many gigahertz. In fact, I've measured some of these types of loads up to 18 gigahertz and they have no trouble. But that's because they're small. To get something to work at high power, it's necessarily large and you have to really do some engineering to make it work well. Last but not least, as they say, it could be that we're doing something wrong. So maybe this cable or this right angle here 
is not performing very well at high frequencies. So what I'm going to do is take my 50 ohm BNC load that I have measured on other test equipment. I know it's good. I'm going to hook it up here and let's see what we get. All right, so what we have now at 590 where it was 0 dB with the 1.5 kilowatt dummy load is now basically minus 20 dB. It's excellent here. So it's not this cable. Is it the PL259, SO239, UHF connector interface? Probably not. Here I've taken the BNC connector and gone through a number of adapters here to get to the SMA. Uh, but one of those adapters contains the PL259 piece here and an SO239 there. And so now we're measuring through one of those interfaces uh, to a very good load. And what we see at 590 megahertz is about minus 11 dB. So not the 0 dB that we were seeing on the 1.5 kilowatt dummy load. So before we end this video, let's take a quick look at measuring S21 with the Nano VNA. So I've enabled the S21 trace, and that's what we have in blue down here. I've also hooked up port 2 to an antenna. So what we're going to be measuring is how much of the signal from port 1 gets to this antenna and goes into port 2. That's what S21 measures. So with the antenna moved out of the picture here, literally, um, we get a pretty low S21. It's reading minus 39 dB. But if I move it over to on top of this case, you can see an interesting effect. It's coming up in the same region, generally speaking, as where the bad reflection coefficient is. That tends to suggest that the signal that leaves this port 1 connector and goes in here does not get absorbed in the dummy load resistor inside, but rather radiates. This case probably prevents a lot of it from getting out, but not completely. But we'll do a teardown video and see if we see that when we get inside of it as well. So I hope to see you in that video next time. Thanks for watching.